Why would I make them so uncomfortable? It probably has to do with your reputation. They feel your methods, your theories are... Spooky. Do you think I'm spooky? His face was so blank and expressionless. He didn't even seem human. I'm not turning my back on anyone! Have you ever found a metal implant in your body? Have you checked everywhere? Mulder, you have to understand! Put it down! You put it down first! Scully! Magic. A couple of magic men. Magic men. Abracadabra, man. Abracadabra. <laughs> are you watching closely? <laughs> this is the prestige, Dave. This is the prestige. Yeah. Oh my God. Hey, everybody. Hello. Hello. Wha- Welcome to a brand new episode of Fox Mulder is a Maniac. Fox Mulder is a magician. Yeah, he is. The great Maldini, Dave. <laughs> the great Maldini. <laughs> We finally made it, folks. Holy it's all, shit. It's what it was all leading yeah, to. Yeah, this is why we did the podcast. Yeah. We this started is a podcast. this podcast specifically to get to this episode. Yeah. Well, it, it's it, this is the Omega. Uh, yeah. You know, like a, a young Mulder watched The Magician on TV, and now he gets to deal with two rival magicians. Uh, this is, of course, a podcast where we're going through the X-Files, to to demonstrate that Fox Mulder probably shouldn't be an FBI agent. Yeah. And yeah, we are on season sep- seven, episode eight, otherwise known as the Amazing Malini. Mm. Oh. Mm. Dave. Oh. Dave. It lives up to its title. It really does. It truly does. Yep. There's a huge, um, a, a, a titanic offer made every single scene. Yes. <laughs> You hadn't watched this in a while, right? No, I don't think I had seen this since it aired. Wow, that's great. Oh, I'm uh, so happy and I for didn't, you. And I didn't remember it being as batshit as it is. It really is. So I have a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff, including oh, good. Uh, including uh, the origin of Fox Mulder's magician obsession. Because it okay. turns out that ever since season two... Producer Frank Spotnitz has been pushing for a magic episode. <laughs> uh, he his one of his favorite TV shows is The Magician, which he worked into. I assume to that uh, original episode. Boy, I so the, I, I'm not even sure I believed that was a real show. Yeah, with Bill Bixby, apparently. Oh uh, shit! Yeah, so I guess that's that's where it all came from. Uh, that's where it all started. Vince Gilligan was assigned the episode, which he described as agony to do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he does an okay job. Yeah, it's as, um, it's as good as Ocean's Eleven, right? But it was it was Frank Spotnitz's like baby, uh, and of course, Frank Spotnitz insisted to include his favorite magician, Ricky J. Ricky J. Yeah. In it. I just yeah, I well, just figured that was just smart casting. It is because he's like the only magician actor well here there's some more layers to this that you're gonna want to know about oh boy mm. so originally ricky J turned down the role he said he does not like playing magicians uh <clears throat> that no, also who turned down the role was the show's backup magician uh that they wanted oh hold on hold one- on hold on i i just need to mm, I'm, i need to <laughs> properly brace myself Yes, you for, do. For whatever name this is going to be, because I'm thinking of a few different names just based on when this episode came out that it could possibly be. It was a one. <sighs> hold on, hold on, hold on. I just, okay. I, I just want to exist okay. in this moment for a second longer. Okay, okay, enjoy uh, it. Okay, okay, okay. Tell me who it was. Tell me who it was. The, ba- the backup magician was a one, David Blaine. Yes. Yep. Yes. Can you imagine the wooden acting? <laughs> it would have been David Blaine and been David Duchovny. Haunting. haunting, haunting. Yes, it would have been horrifying. David Blaine. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. This this it would have uh, this would have been a classic X Files yarn had it been David Blaine because it would have been bone chilling. It really would have been this this version of the episode with Ricky J is just kind of zany. Right, he's he's a delightful old Ricky J who has since passed. Yes, he uh, is. He's is fantastic. Yeah, yeah of uh, course he's in Deadwood. Like, he, yeah, he's the magician you always see in movies and TV. If you don't know yeah. Ricky J's name, he he has a very dry delivery. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And of course, a lot of the making of Jillian Anderson stated that uh, she she was the both her and Duchovny were very delighted with all the magic tricks on set. In fact, they when they so they wouldn't take no for an answer with Ricky J. They called him up. They got him to the office. Uh, where he did a series of card trips tricks for them, where I guess the meeting just redu- was reduced to a magic show. I imagine that's what every meeting with a magician is like. It's yeah. you're, you tr- you sit there and you try to wait what seems like a professional amount of minutes before you ask him to do a trick. Right. So, uh, I, so I, I guess they got to minute five or six for like, all right, cut the shit, do some shit, do something. Yeah, show me exactly. Something. Like do, we know do why a we're trick. here. Do a trick. Dance monkey. Yeah. They, uh, so I guess Ricky J agreed to be in the show uh, as I, long as I he got to do. Did. Yeah. Well, under the condition that he got to do the tricks he knew how to do, I guess he didn't want to learn any new tricks for it. That's fair. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, a lot of the tricks are in camera. Uh, like when, you know, the guy's hand lights on fire, that's a stuntman. Yeah. And um, like they, when his head turns around, obviously that's a digital effect. And a lot of the, a lot of the well, a lot of the lifts are not possible, like when he takes uh, Mulder and Scully's badges without coming near them, stuff like that. Oh yeah, they do that a few times where it's like that's yeah, not how magicians just not, work. It's just not possible. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, when he steals the guy's uh, the guy's wallet and mm-hmm. he never touches him in the seed, he never and comes near the, him. Yep. And the least realistic part is when he says, "Do want to help me make two hundred thousand bucks? You can help me do magic." And like they don't beat his they ass don't beat immediately. Him with pipes, yeah, yeah. Like as that whole scene, like it's like, buddy, a magician walking into like a like a fucking hard knock dive bar to talk to the local gangster about yeah. about doing a magic heist. There's just yeah. uh, so many different ways that's going to end in a stabbing, right? Yeah. According, so you mentioned the head. According to Wikipedia, and I do not think this is true. Wikipedia says the scene featuring the amazing Malini turning his head 360 degrees was created using a prosthetic head to which I say, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. That's a digital you effect. Mis- yeah. You misunderstood Wikipedia. I think they, um, th- I think they misread that the part where the head falls off. The head off. falls off. That's a prosthetic yeah. head. Like that's a dummy, but no, yeah, no, 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 no. The head rotating no. is a digital effect. Yeah. That sir <laughs> is a digital effect. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's, it, a, it's so a very people... obvious one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean yes. it's you know it's it looks it is, fine. Dare it, I say not a great effect? It's 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 fine for February network television in the year two thousand, but it's like it's it's like going back and watching something like Mortal Kombat Annihilation. There's no way anyone would look at that and not know it was a digital effect. Like it's right. very very obvious. All right, the arm trick is real though. That's yes. a legit. That's an easy one. Well, it's not easy. You have to be flexible, which is probably why Jillian Anderson gets to do it at the end. Because you actually start with your arm bent, most yeah. like, and then you go, you unbend it. But mm-hmm. you have to be flexible enough to make it seem like it's, yeah, doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm just picturing know, Duchovny trying to do it and snapping his elbow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Duchovny barely does a magic trick in this. He kind of um, does a little thing with the coin. Yeah, but I think it's masked with a cut. Oh, it might like, be, I think, yeah. It might yeah. be. Uh, yeah, it starts on the Santa Monica Pier, and a magician does a trick where he twists his head all the way around. Uh, someone, and, then, and then someone finds him in his van, and his head comes off. And Mulder Scully gets thrown into just a magician heist. Yeah, an o- a magician Ocean's Eleven. It's Ocean's Eleven yeah. with two magicians. Yeah, completely n- not an X-File. Which, it's funny, because just last episode when boulder was like let's go home it was because the x file is over so it's very funny to me that this time i guess we'll get into that but uh, we know exactly why Mulder hangs around this time dave we really do yeah uh it, this is a also this, this is a this episode is weird uh and it's a zany episode but it still feels like an x files episode unlike last week's episode yeah 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 Last week's was fucking that's wild. That's a mess, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that, yeah, that's it for behind the scenes stuff. Do we want to just get into it? Do you have any thoughts about the episode in general? Well, did we, did we like, did we lay out, did we say what the 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 actual X-File is? It's this, yeah, well, you just did, actually. 
More or less. His head I mean, falls people... off. It turns out he's got a twin brother that uh, that he was he used his dead twin brother to fake his death. That he and another magician, his magician protege, who initially poses as his rival, can uh, take this local gangster, frame him for a bank robbery, while at the same time robbing the bank themselves. That's basically it. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Uh, my, yeah. My thoughts on the episode was. It's, I mean, it's a delightful little romp. It's very very 90s <laughs> oh for and sure and they have dime store dane cook as the cool magician which is just oh man funny who is hell. that guy i yeah. have no idea but like the cool it's, magician yeah. is such a funny idea to try to pull oh, off yeah. well the 90s so it started in like the 70s but we had that that brief obsession with magicians that lasted way longer than it should and then when you thought it was going down david blaine showed up and like breathed life into it of the idea of a cool magician yeah. remember how his first special had leonardo dicaprio no i do not it remember was that hosted by leonardo dicaprio what the fuck are you talking about dave no the first secret the first not secret david blaine street magician i think it was called was like it took america by storm and i think he was just friends with leonardo dicaprio and um yeah like David Blaine was very do, much. They, they do seem like dudes who would hang out. Yes, they do. David Blaine was very much like M Night Shyamalan, right? Where it was like when he first showed up, everybody was like, "Oh my god, how does he do this stuff?" And then like he just kept, he wouldn't go away. Yeah. <laughs> and then he was like, "I'm going to freeze myself in ice, and right. I'm going to do all and, these." And, and then it he, was like, "You're not doing he, magic tricks anymore." Yeah, but he anymore. stopped doing magic and started just doing endurance stunts. Right. Like he and started then, doing seer school torture bullshit to himself. Right. And then in retrospect, people pointed out that the street magic formula is actually like, it's actually the least impressive version of magic. Yeah. Because unlike stage magic, it's camera tricks. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's editing tricks. It's it, very it, controlled. It's it's uh, I, like a, his levitation is forced perspective, right? It's like the positioning of his, the camera. So some say that it's so there is a levitation trick you can do with your feet. Yeah, uh, that you can make, do the illusion of lifting off about four inches at the most. And so what people say, it's actually a similar Houdini trick is he performed that trick, right? Then they he would have people kind of um work up the people who watched it and have them exaggerate what they saw for the camera. Yeah. Uh, which is something Houdini liked to do. And then I, uh, what I, what I've read is that the, when you see him go off like three feet, it's just him on a crane. Like it's just a, they just went somewhere. They reshot that perspective. And like, that's what I mean about the way street magic works is of course, mm. like you're editing it all together so you can actually just have them perform a better version of the trick on a set uh, later or just on the same area of the street. Like huh. it's all it's so much more controlled. You can cheat every single I way you want. Yeah, I didn't realize it was allegedly that uh, altered. Yeah, well, I mean, magicians are liars. That's all they are. Well, yeah, but like part of the fun of it is they have to do it in front of you. Do they, though? Like that's, that's the thing. That's part of the fun of it. He does a version of the trick in front of real people, but then they make the trick look better later. Well, then it's um, just a special effect. Then I'm just watching a movie. Right. But like it's that, the, that's it's what the, I'm saying. It's that's the, what I'm saying about the street magic is it's when you watch those specials, it's edited uh, and it's a film, essentially, as opposed to when you watch a person on stage. There's no editing. Like, it's a person in front of an audience. Yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, like, that's... Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's like the difference between watching, like, a, tra a trapeze act or Cirque du Soleil or something and then watching, uh, like, a Jet Li movie where it's all wire work. Right. But at the same time, there's a philosophy with magic tricks that it doesn't matter because ultimately, going back to people like Houdini, they're all just liars. They're all just uh, grifters. That's kind of the point. So like like Houdini often would just spread rumors about himself, mm -hmm. and so he wouldn't even do anything. <laughs> like he just spread rumors that he did something amazing, or he'd yeah have people exaggerate the stories later. Uh, so like it, you could argue that it's all in line with just 
Yeah, that's like true. Like the industry. That's true. Which is just like, all you're doing is lying to people. Right. But nobody, yes. nobody actually believes you can do magic. But like, for me anyway, part of the deal is like, look, I know you're not a fucking sorcerer, but right. I know you're like a clever performer and you're able to do this. In a, you're able to fool people as they're watching. Right. That's that's way more fun. Yeah, I agree. When there's uh, like uh, Penn and like, Teller off to talk any, about yeah, this, fucking anyone could do it if it's a movie. Like I could do it if it's a movie. Right, exactly. And that's the thing is, it's better as a as a skill. I think it's more impressive. Yeah. That's why like someone doing a sleight of hand trick in front, and that isn't to say David Blaine can't do that stuff too. Oh, I'm sure he can. Uh, but it's just like, yeah, that shit does seem more impressive. But in the at the end of the day, it's just about like. I would argue David Copperfield also did some televised stunts that, like, kind of only worked televised. When he, when he walks through the Great Wall, it only works televised. Pretty sure, yeah. yeah. I think he did that the Houdini way, uh, which is that he... If you watch that footage, there's it's him and a bunch of assistants that are all dressed identical. Yeah. And so I think the theory is that he switches... Yeah, to he, ha- one of he them. has to. He has to. It's the only way he can yeah. do it. But like, yeah, you would the way see, he... like, because he obviously couldn't. Well, I don't know. Anyway, the way he made the Statue of Liberty disappear is something that yes, the audience there uh, did witness as a magic trick. But uh, he just moved their perspective on the stage, and that's another one where it's like not you have to be in from a very specific angle. Yeah, to see the trick where the cameras are. That's uh, yeah, that's show business, baby. That's show business, baby. That's like that's the only you only build what the camera's gonna see. Yeah, it's just all lying is the point. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm just saying if it's, you're gonna if we're all if we all know you're a liar, you better do it impressively. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean, but it's just it's it's one of those things where they always say it where it's like it's like the reason they're like I'll never tell is usually because the reason the or the secret is like when you hear it you go oh well I could do that. Like, it usually is like, oh, that's actually really, really simple and lame. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Uh, uh, Like, there was, uh, we'll go off on the tangent. Why not? There was, I believe, a Kreskin trick that where he would, (laughs) oh, yeah, Kreskin, Kreskin loved this shit, where he, um, where he would, um, I think it was Kreskin, don't quote me on that, where you'd have, you'd be at a restaurant and you'd take a wristwatch and you tell a waiter to to go in the back and set the time to whatever time you'd want, wrap it in a napkin, and you'd, of course, psychically predict what time they'd set. And the way he'd do it is he'd just include, like, a hundred bucks and a note that said, could you set this to three o'clock? And they'd do it. <laughs> and that's the trick. Yep. And it's like, oh, that's not actually very impressive now, is it? No, it's not. Just <laughs> bribe the waiter. But you know what? Gets the job done, doesn't it? <laughs> it sure does. Yeah. So yeah, they're they're just liars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't go near them. <laughs> well, yeah, obviously <laughs> that's a separate issue. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is a magician episode. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> no, twenty minutes get... in. <laughs> that's all right. I, I I don't mind a good tangent. Um, a do you want to go a into good magic tange? Yeah, magic Mag tange. tange. Uh, should we get into world's luckiest detective? Then? Uh, boy, should we? Yeah, I kind of want to think about this more of like world's luckiest magicians, because much like a lot of heist movies, this uh, their whole scheme really depends on Mulder and Scully doing certain things. Yeah. And I want to point out that they are so lucky Scully's there because Mulder is ready to just uh, hunt like a haunted magician at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And Scully points out. Maybe it's that guy in the footage heckling him. Maybe, <laughs> like, and, and so she just happens to look at the tape, point that out, and see how to get the guy's fingerprints. Mm-hmm. And had Scully not been there, they, it would have ruined their heist. <laughs> like, right, they it, needed the FBI there. They really um, needed the FBI to ask him questions. Right. It's very, yeah, it's, this is, we're talking to very Ocean's Eleven, where, like, everything is apparently all part of the plan. Yeah. And, they have Scully, to have they have to have read the script. Yes. So like Scully has to have caught that cuz Mulder wasn't gonna. Uh, later they decide no. <laughs> Scully again says Mulder cons- only looks at the tape again to show her the trick where he turns his head around. Yes. 
exactly. And then she's like, hey, what about that Eckler? And he's like, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and Scully also points out maybe we should go to that guy for help later. Uh, which, by the way, that scene where he's like, what's in it for me? Takes place literally in front of the van they want him to look at. Yep. So I was thinking, like, what? Did they come they there wa- first? They walked him all the way there. Yeah. Uh, Mulder has to find the money in the ceiling. Uh it, it's a lot of moving parts that they it's it, it it feels like at the end we should it should be revealed that scully's getting a cut of the money because she seems to know exactly what needs to happen for the magicians yeah to do their heist mm-hmm. yeah that would i would <laughs> i mean were this oceans 11 that would be the reveal yeah she does a magic trick at the end yeah she does she's she's a magician too you can't trust her that's right yeah she, she ate a cricket one time yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I, I actually don't have much in terms of Mulder lucking into things. Uh, it's more of just bad investigations. Like when they first find out that the twin got in a car accident, you know, they could look up his medical record. He said he <laughs> they was... They could look yeah, into that. They for sure could, yeah. Uh, they just don't. Like, they don't really... Scully does some detective work at the beginning, and for the most part, they're just like let around they're they're like they don't really fall into anything because it's just stuff happening to them Mm -hmm. yeah like is there any yeah because he says he has his car accident in mexico um right and we're to believe like oh yeah see you can't get files right you can't get you can't can't get files from mexico it's like can't you yeah and like certainly he would go to the doctor right (laughs) like there'd be There'd be medical records from a hospital. Listen, they don't look into any of that. He's posing. Uh, Tony J is is posing as his twin brother, but he's doing so by wearing a net brace and pretending to be a double double amputee, having lost both of his legs in an accident. When really he's just sitting on, very obviously sitting on them too. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> it feels like right. there would be some record of that. Right. Seems they like never a, look seems like it. a pretty intense procedure. Because the idea is they find out the magician has a twin. Mm -hmm. The magician who performed a trick and then his head fell off seconds later. And so they naturally are like, oh, it's the twin. And then and then he's like, oh, look, see, I have no legs. And for a while, they're just like, oh, I guess it's not him. And it's like, really? The magicians whose head fell off. Uh, you're not going to look into whether or not this injury is faked. Yeah. And and they certainly don't. He, you would pr- I assume he probably has a regular doctor he has to visit right. when it, in town in Los Angeles that has nothing to do with his accident in Mexico. Because when yeah. you're when you're confined to a wheelchair, you sort of need additional care. Right. Uh, yeah, that's the probably thing. some would... records of that in town somewhere. You don't even have to look that hard for that. Right, and they would find no records, and that would be a big red flag. Right. <laughs> because it's like, surely the yeah. man who just lost his legs would be going to the doctor. But nope. So, like, I don't know. It, it's it's hard to say they're lucky because, also, spoilers, uh, they don't solve anything. They don't they make f- any arrests. They figure it out, but they don't have any evidence, so they yeah. can't make any arrests. Yeah, so it's hard to say he was lucky in the sense that it's really just two magicians like doing circles around Mulder and Scully. Yeah. Uh, and at the very end, Mulder pieces together just enough to sort of thwart them, but not really. To thwart and we'll them, certainly we talk will, about we're that. We're going to talk about that, yeah. Yeah. There's, there's one uh, huge element there. <laughs> there really is. There really is really is yep uh uh, and so like i don't know do you have any world's luckiest detective stuff no this is mostly the next part (laughs) all right he did this there's very there's very little investigation in this they actually kind of put most of the stuff together themselves yeah again they're just they just sort of watch it all kind of happen and after when it's too late they're like i think they did this yeah um all right well uh, should we should we get into the next section then yeah yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> set your set your DVRs to to record this this prime time special. Um, yeah. Fly in on a little helicopter with uh, lots of uh, smoke machine and uh, dramatic eighty synth music playing. Um, right. With your jet black mullet blowing in the wind behind you because you're about to make the Statue of Liberty disappear. Right. Um, because it's time for Mulder after dark. Oh. 
if See, that's <laughs> that's a magic special saxophone. Oh hell yeah! Mm. That that yeah. that that sound that we that, that excerpt of music we're using was probably in a David Copperfield special. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it, it, I, just look up David Copperfield's Statue of Liberty special on YouTube and just watch the introduction and everything I just made. Everything I just said will make glorious sense. <laughs> That's how it begins. Oh yeah. You can. You don't even need to see the magic trick after that. No, you really don't. You really the just magic, need to see actually, David Blaine flying in a helicopter. <laughs> the magic trick itself is actually because of like the quality of TV at the time doesn't look very good. No, like, it's it, it's most of the impact is kind of knowing ahead of time what he's doing. Yeah. And like having read about it over the years, but yeah, like the the footage that exists is not terribly high quality. So it, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> he has um, a bunch of specials. He does, including he sure including does. one where he's like breaking out of prison in like sixty minutes. Do you remember that one? Yeah, and the, my it's, god, was that? There's one where he's tied up in a in a. So there's one where he's tied up in a um uh uh like a hospital or like a building that's going to be detonated. Yeah. Uh that one's pretty good. The one that I legitimately is still trying to deal with uh is when he went off Niagara Falls. That was a fuck like to figure out how he did it. Uh cuz they continue they make it one continuous shot of him getting put in the thing. Mm -hmm. If anybody knows how he does that, let me know because I've been mulling that one over. I've it's even seen the theory that he the the device he's in was so secure that you could theoretically go over the no, falls in it. No. No, I don't think David that's it at all either. David did not go over Niagara Falls in a fucking barrel. No, it's not, not a happen. barrel. But like it's it's a really but convincing it's like a, shot. It's like a little container though, right? Yeah, uh, here's oh, okay, so the the red flag to me is they do the thing where his feet are sticking out. And that is one of the things he loves to do anytime it's yeah. definitely not him. <laughs> like, it's easy to, like, David Coverfield clearly figured out some way to simulate movement of a foot, you know, like sticking out, because he used it in a lot of his stage magic. It's more of like, where did he go when he gets in the device? That's the thing that's bo that's always bothered me. Um, uh, it could have been a false bottom, and he... he Sunk. he could have gone into the water yeah, yeah. He, he sunk in a different thing and it was just not in the thing at all and it was just like a pair of dummy legs that went over yeah it's a very fast swap for the amount of time it takes because at the end he comes up on a helicopter like from the falls so he had to have gotten out of that situation got on like got to another area far enough away got on a helicopter and of course there's tons of things we're not seeing on camera so right. yeah we're not seeing him climb up out of the water and dry himself off and jump into a helicopter behind the camera right. as it's going over the falls right. anyway but listen we're just talking about david copperfield's prime I know. magic was saying, a whole ass watch, thing in the, in, the, in the 80s folks like yeah. he, there like he had legit prime time specials that right. the nation would gather around to watch Right, we all grew up watching it. Mm -hmm. I saw him live. He was very funny live. He was actually um a little more blue live, uh, which was kind of neat. Uh, I, my point is that go watch that one. I think it's low key one of his more impressive, like big special things tricks. Um, what? Where are we? What's I don't know. On? We're just, we're uh, just David Mulder, Copperfield cast now. Yeah. So Mulder is so excited at the beginning of this. Yeah. He's like, okay. he shows, she, she is so scully the picture. He's like, see the picture? And then she says, why are you talking like Tony Randall? Because yeah. Mulder is in fact he talking is in like fact Tony Randall. He is in fact doing a Tony Randall impression. Yeah. In as much so that Mulder can impersonate anyone. But yes. Yes. She says, <laughs> she's talking about the, the, it is a murder. And Mulder goes, oh, you think this was a murder? She says, don't you? And what Mulder says, he thinks it is. This is his beginning theory, is he says, it is a magic trick gone horribly wrong. One that claims, claims the lives of those who attempt it. That is where we're starting. Right. And that is the thing that, that's the speech that Ricky J recites before he does the trick. So Mulder is one, aware of this trick, has read about it clearly. Uh, yeah. Two believes it, right? His, believes no, his, it is real. Right. 
You're right. I didn't even think about that. His theory is just what the magician said. Right. His theory is that the magician's spiel before he does the trick is is real. Right. And he never it like he's like surprised by the reveal that the head had been sawed off. Yeah. And that it was in fact not a magic trick gone long. No, and in in fact the, the 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 dead body had had died a month ago of like heart failure. Right. But to reiterate, had Scully not been there, if mm-hmm. she was sick, Mulder would have shown up, decided that it was a magic trick gone wrong, pursued that until he was happy enough to put that in his file, and the heist magicians would have been like, who would have thought that that's what they went with? Right. Like, they're they're counting on the idea that the investigator is, in fact, someone who would investigate it, not someone who would go, yeah, it's magic. <laughs> And but like they would have back. to know they would have to know how to get the FBI involved, right? Because the FBI right. would not get involved with this case normally. Um, so they had to have been specifically targeting Mulder by making the details of the case so weird. That's like the only explanation. Right. But that was their worst mistake. So, well, sort of, uh, I guess. Uh, but because if, if Scully wasn't there, Mulder would have gone off on this magic tangent, like investigating this case as if magic is real. And Lord knows where he would have ended up. At the, who, so, right. who knows who would have gone to jail at the end of this episode? Yeah, exactly. Because I mean, statistically speaking, no one would have gone to jail, but somebody would probably have been killed. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, just to stress. Scully is the one who's like, what about that heckler? And he's like, what, you think he's a murderer? Mulder was ready to completely ignore that other person who yeah. turns out to be the magician working with Malini. Yeah. So like, it's just, I can't, it's amazing that he was like, okay, someone's videotaping us. So clearly that's enough evidence to get me involved. It just would have been staggering if he's sitting there waiting for the FBI to visit him. And he's just like, yeah, huh. <laughs> like, like kind of sitting up every time a car drives by, like when you're waiting for a package. Right. Like, is that, a, is that then, a, like, No, no weeks pass the heist doesn't work out he reads in the paper that an fbi agent like shot a mall magician yes yeah. shot a birthday <laughs> magician to death <Yeah. laughs> beat him to death with his own magic rings yeah <laughs> the uh the details of this case read when when Mulder is like reciting them to scully as they get there it sounds like a catfishing email specifically targeting Mulder. <laughs> it really does like that's Holy the oh, that is shit. the only thing I wrote down when I watched this episode. Right, <laughs> my only note is that this is like a catfishing scam just for Malter. Right, it really is. Uh, and I'm just so curious what he thought, what he was thinking happened. Like, because he <laughs> says several times, he says later, if it was a murder, I'm not convinced. And I really am like, why doesn't Scully say, okay, Malter? Tell me what you think What do you happened. think happened? Yeah. Because he, he never says, he keeps saying it's a magic trick gone wrong. And it's yeah, like, but that's, okay. the, that's as far as he elaborates. Like, normally, he comes right. in hot with some, like, mostly formed theory he already had. Right. And it's like, okay, so do you think there was, like, an apparatus that he used to twist his head, head around that when he got in the fan, van malfunctioned? No, Mulder uh, would have... Do you think he magically turned his head around and there were dark consequences for it? The, the second like, thing. Like, what do you think? Yeah, it's, it's the gotta second be, thing. right? It's the second thing. It's the second thing. Yeah. Mulder completely believed that there was some dark gift or some pact he made with a genie or something yeah. like that like that's where Mulder's head was at yeah it's gotta be it's incredible i can't I just, I just can't believe where this starts yeah uh and then um he yeah so that's his first theory then they um go to the guy they sit there like an asshole and watch him rant about magic while doing magic tricks and i just i i really like it's not really about Mulder, but I like that he does all these magic tricks. And then Mulder responds with, those are great, but I don't see how they're different than what Malini did. And I just love that instead of interrogating them, this guy, they're just sort of watching. And yeah. then Mulder's like, yeah, that was delightful. Thank you. Yeah. He like applauds very politely. Yeah, yeah. I accept your offer. <laughs> Whoopee, um, I am delighted. My child's heart is, is, is uh, set into a flight of fancy. Yeah, I like because it doesn't say anything about Mulder, but I do like every scene with a magician it involves Mulder and Scully stopping to enjoy a quick magic show and then be like, okay, good job. Anyway, 
that let's is talk about the murder. I, I feel like that's completely realistic, though. Yeah, exactly. Like you wouldn't that's be able like to it. you wouldn't be able to help yourself. No, it's what they did making the the episode. Right, apparently. like we know that's what these people did. Yeah. So you'd you'd think that like like law enforcement people maybe wouldn't, but of course they would. Yeah, of course they would. Oh no! Uh, when I was um, a teen, I learned a magic trick that was very well done. Uh, a very like a very convincing trick, and I was practicing it. I was closing at a Cinemark, uh, and I was just like idly doing the trick because it was like nighttime. And when it's nighttime, it's just you and a cop, uh, which isn't fun. But uh, I I uh, was sitting there doing the trick, and then I did it. And I was sitting on the floor, and I look up, and the cop standing over me. And in his cop voice, he said, "I'm going to need to see you do that again." <laughs> <laughs> so I did it again. Yeah, of course and then you he did. was like, So how did you do that? <laughs> I was like, I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> but he did it as a cop in the cop voice. And it's demanded cop voice. that I do another Perfect. magic trick for him. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. You have to. I people forget themselves when magic is happening. You just you yeah. be, you become a child. Because right. you're just like, I want to see the trick. Show me the trick. Yeah, uh, show and me the everything trick. else ceases to exist. Yeah. Yeah, that's the power dumb. of magic, Dave. That's the real magic. <laughs> that's the real magic. Yeah. <laughs> um. So Mulder's second theory is that his brother did it for magic glory, which is really funny because they use that against him later as mm-hmm. their alibi. He gives the guy his alibi, basically. It's also like, in, in Mulder's defense. It's probably not completely untrue. Yes, but in another in another way, they really want money. Yeah, you're right. But yes, um uh let's see i don't have so Mulder isn't he's kind of on his best behavior because he's dealing with magicians right um i i couldn't tell what level of contempt Mulder has for them or because he's he's delighted but he's generally unimpressed at the i same think time. Mulder's trying to be cool yeah that's a he's good trying point. to be cool around the ma- magicians because we know for a fact that Mulder loves magic Right. He thinks magic's the coolest, Dave. So right. he thinks these two guys are the coolest. Absolutely. Um, and he and just doesn't I, want to geek out on them because he's supposed to be the FBI agent. Right. I have a question about that. Mm-hmm. When he does a magic trick to, for Scully, mm-hmm. it's days after the inve- into the investigation. Do you think he learned that last night? Or do you think, like, because he saw the magicians were doing it and he wanted to join in? Or do you think he always knew that trick? I think that's the one trick Mulder can do. Like, we know he's into magic because he's watching The Magician the night Samantha gets abducted. So, like, I mean, honestly, like, the third possibility is that that's the only trick he knows, and he's been practicing it for the past 25 years. Right. It's the only thing he can do. The thing is, no matter what the answer, Scully absolutely owns Mulder at the end of this by doing the arm trick that's way more sophisticated and Mulder can't figure it out. So basically, we know Mulder really likes magic. He's probably been practicing that trick for a while. Mm -hmm. And Scully picks up a way more sophisticated magic trick without, I don't think you could, you could argue maybe off camera. She like learned it from the magician. But I'm pretty sure Scully just figured it out and did it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll, so it's. I'll say it's not necessarily more sophisticated because it really just kind of depends on how flexible you are. Right. But, but it's also. She still figured it out. Right. It's also like the kind of thing. That's like a schoolyard trick, right? That's like somebody, something somebody at like recess would do and all the kids would be like, no way. It's like Mel right. Gibson getting out of the straitjacket and lethal weapon. It's like. It's right. a, it's a trick that you see on like the playground or something. So I just assume Scully knew that trick. Like it was like, oh, I know oh, that. Maybe. I, I, the fucking Dottie, well, Dottie noted- Henson in third grade used to do this or something like that. You know, right? I feel like that was a fairly because I remember it was actually on a David Blaine special. Uh, so that and I like I had never seen it before. So I think it's a fairly new trick, but it is also like. You're right, where it's like, it's actually probably a really old trick, because you literally don't need anything to do it. Right. I've seen, I've not seen that on the playground, but I've seen, you know, things like that growing up, like kids would right. do shit, like kids who are double jointed or more flexible could do like cool right. shit. Yeah. So like, I just like that Scully 
essentially is just like, yeah, I'm not only am I unimpressed with magic, but here, here's a magic trick. I can just do it. And Mulder has no idea. Yeah, Mulder's no just idea how staring at it. Yeah. How'd you do it? <laughs> um, the really other thing you have to we have to point out before like okay there's other things but i kind of saved it for fireable offenses but we yeah. Kinda, uh, yeah that's a big one but Mulder walks into a man's office who has claimed to have lost his legs in a car accident and like we said uh-huh you you could look into his medical records uh you could you know investigate the accident instead he grabs his, his wheelchair check his car because you have yep. to have special controls installed on your car in order to drive right. it if you don't have legs or if your legs are paralyzed right there's a you number a- of ways you can check on this that don't involve dumping a man out of his wheelchair yes but that is but what guess Mulder what Mulder does, does. <laughs> yeah <laughs> which good thing he was right good thing he was correct because yeah that wouldn't have been good he probably would uh, still get in trouble for that. Yeah, probably. Even though he That's was still, right, like, I think <laughs> you if, can't if, do that. <laughs> yeah, you could. You could. He could, if he wanted to, hire a lawyer and call that assault. Like he yeah. could do that. Uh, I obviously they're trying it's to also get away just, with. It's also just magic like not crime. not good practice. <laughs> so no, like, again, you, you don't reward that behavior. It's like, well, Mulder, no. you were right this time. Right. It's, uh, that's, let's not do that again. <laughs> that's like that's like literally something out of the naked gun. Yeah. Like when he's trying to prove that guy is a fraud. <laughs> like that it's it, it like that is slapstick material that Mulder pulls in this. And yeah, again, it's right, kind that, of yeah. world's luckiest detective. Lucky he was right in that moment. Mm-hmm. Cause yeah, otherwise that guy would have been so angry. Um and so I guess do you want to get into fireball offenses i'm trying to think if there's any more moments like that i don't think there were no but gosh that, Mulder, wheel, that again, wheelchair moment was huge that's pretty big i i stood up <laughs> he just he they walk into his office for the second interview this is they're coming back to see him and they just walk in he's in the middle of a work day at the bank Mulder just grabs his wheelchair and just starts wheeling him into another room which right uh, if you want to get like he could hire a lawyer and argue he'd been kidnapped in yeah. that situation because they just grab him and move him. It's like, where are you? What's going on? Well, you can't just yeah. do that to a person. No, you, you cannot. You can't hold somebody against their will, even if you are law enforcement. Um, right. And then as soon as they get into this big bank uh, conference room, he just dumps him out of the wheelbarrow, a wheelchair like a wheelbarrow, like a wheelbarrow yeah. full of potatoes. Yep, and he just goes spilling on the and floor. And even if he even. Even though he is faking, he's still like a 60-year-old man. <laughs> you just dumped right. onto his face, onto yeah. the ground. Okay. Assault. Yeah, yeah, it's assault. You can't do that, Walter. No, you really can't. You can't do that. You're a FBI agent. Yeah, and you super can't do that. <laughs> right. And uh, so getting into fireable offenses. Oh, Other man. things you can't do. <laughs> other things. So first of all, shout out to the cop. Who gives a man his gun and the clip? Oh, that's not a cop. That's a Brinks driver. <laughs> oh yeah. Either way, that also feels like. I mean, he's not Mulder, but uh, I w- I would let that man go. Yeah, I, I was gonna <laughs> say. Ricky Jay is just like, ooh, I I want to get a gun, and the gun the 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 driver is just yeah. like, oh yeah, here check sure, out mine. Sure, check out mine. Now, in his defense, <laughs> he does unload it and unchamber the round. But then but, he gives him but the then clip. He gives him the clip anyway. So it's like yeah. okay, and then yeah, of course, Ricky Jay swaps the clip out. Like I, you know, he's gonna fuck with the gun. Like I'm watching it. I'm just like, oh, he's taking right. the firing pin out or something. Right. Uh, no, he just he did something way simpler. He just put blanks in it. Yeah, but yeah, that's um, even even though he's not law enforcement and is just a, a private security driver. Like, yeah, that's still a you fireable offense. Right, you don't hand people your gun. Yeah, what are you doing? It, yeah, certainly you don't it, hand people a gun in front of the bank vault that's still open. Yeah, you don't do any of that. That's Probably bad shouldn't practice. do that. Yeah, yeah, shouldn't generally it, shouldn't hand anyone your gun. Right, it's your gun. It's your gun. <laughs> like, don't do that. Um. In terms of Mulder and Scully, now, first of all, I can't, I wish I could see the scene where they have to go to Skinner and say that they were beaten by a pair of magicians. This would, <laughs> this, Skinner this is. Skinner has to process that information. I've, I feel like this 
is when we would learn that Sk- Skinner has a bottle of whiskey in his desk drawer. <laughs> Because yeah. he he would just pull it out, like he wouldn't yeah. even bother to to try to hide it. Right, he, he just pulled but, that wild turkey out <laughs> as soon as even, they finished. As soon as they said the word magician, right. But even more incredible, uh, they let themselves get beaten by a pair of magicians, and at the expense of a man of going a man's to jail. Freedom. Yep. Yeah. That's so. Let yeah yeah. Let's talk about this man for a second. Mm-hmm. So he does he ever. Pull out a gun. No. Does he ever commit a crime? Mm. He threatens to beat a man up. He th- Yeah, and he's running. I mean... Is he, though? No. He's, all right. He's gambling, and yeah. the guy owes him money. Right. That's all we know. That's and true. And he has a history of bank robbery. He could be just a tough guy now. Like, he, like yes, he might beat someone's ass because they owe him money. Right. He's not a good person. Well, we don't... That's, but we, we really don't know. Right. We don't know anything about him other than he is an ex-con covered in tattoos and he has two goons in his employ. Now, we know he, he runs a high-stakes poker game. So, hence the goons. And we know he runs, like, a pool hall. And, yeah. and, and kind of a... You know, not like a bad neighborhood, but, you know... Uh, that would attract clientele like himself. So you need security. Right. Hence the goons. So yep. it's like, he's it, not, we don't see him do anything illegal. He's just kind of like a hard ass. Right. The only crime we know that he's committed is being a ex-con. Yeah. And Mulder and Scully having, decide. Having prison tattoos. Right. Mulder and Scully. So what happens is that he is framed for the um uh, for the robbery yes he is so they they pull th- somehow while in jail ricky J and uh the other fucking whatever <laughs> his Kmart name is dane cook T- yeah Kmart dane cook purposely put themselves in jail the night of the robbery they also fake an attempted robbery using fake tattoos of this guy mm-hmm. um they also leave it they also put them some of the money i believe uh in in um the pool hall they put all of the money in the pool hall all of the money okay mm-hmm. they put all of the money in the pool hall and so what they frame this man and the idea is that they're this is all to get Mulder's thumbprint and badge number so they it's, could do electronic stuff which by the way there's got to be an easier way to get that thing like yeah. you know what you could do you could put on a magic show invite Mulder, get his thumbprint that way and incorporate a magic trick where he has to say his badge number. Mm-hmm. That's all you need. That's ba- I mean, Dave, that's basically what they do. Yeah. But Mulder, yes. Mulder just gets the playing card out of evidence before they're able to lift his thumbprint from it. Right. So what that means is that everything else was just for funsies. Well, but like it was, to I feel get- like you could, what it was because Ricky J owed the uh, tattoo guy $20,000. So right, it was, it was you, twofold. It was to get out of debt with this guy and also to steal a bunch of money from the bank. Right. But you know how, you know what? It's an easier way to get out of debt with that guy. Stealing a bunch of money from the bank mm-hmm. and then giving him the $20,000. Like, I don't know. That's not about Mulder. But, this but then you like, get to keep the $20,000. Right. They're, listen, but, Dave, they're shady magicians. They are. It's just they were, they were potentially taking out millions. They could have literally done a magic show. And been like, see you, sir. Are you in the FBI? Uh, what's your FBI badge number? And he would have said, oh, it's JTT 047101111. And they'd be like, thanks. Uh, pick a card, any card. Like, I don't know. It, it, we've talked about this. Mulder would fall for phishing scams. Mulder uh, does fall so for many, a phishing scam yeah. in this episode. Yes, he does. You're right. Uh, but the point is, is that they frame this man. And then the episode ends with them both getting out of jail. Mm-hmm. Mulder and Scully walking up and being like, I have no evidence of this, but I think you you broke out last night, actually robbed the place and framed that man. And they they more or less like smirk and say like, eh, yeah, you're on to us. And then they they like, he like briefly mentions the guy who's framed. And he's like, oh yeah, he's got his own problems now. Anyway, you're free to go provided the magic is over and they just let them go Mm -hmm. 
and allow the man, the innocent man, Mm -hmm. to go to jail for potentially the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know this, but California has a little thing called a three strikes law, Mm -hmm. which means that you will go to jail for life Mm -hmm. if you commit any three crimes, one of them being robbery. Yep. Uh, That man gets life in prison for a crime he didn't do. Yep. And Mulder and Scully know this. But listen, they he's bad. He deserves to be in jail. And these rascally right. magicians deserve to be free, Dave. Right. And that's what fucking happens. Yep. That's how the episode ends. Yeah. That is unreal. It is uh, quietly extremely racist. Yep. Um, because Tattoo Guy is Hispanic. Yep. Um, and just like, and in, in addition to being racist, it's just like really, <laughs> oh, well, he's an ex-con. He doesn't. He doesn't matter. He's a bad he guy. He belongs life. in jail. I'm like, so these guys are fucking criminals too. Yeah. Like the whole they like um Dime Store Dane Cook was uh Alvarez's cellmate. So right. he is also an ex con. Yeah, who knows what he did what he did. And Ricky J sawed his own dead brother's head yes. off. He kept his dead they... brother in a freezer for a month, sawed right. his head off, and then took over his life. Right. And are we sure they know his brother died of a heart attack? Are we sure we know why he died of a heart attack? Are we sure we know that Ricky J didn't do anything to his brother? Like there's so many unanswered questions. We don't know those answers. Yeah. Mulder and Scully tell the magicians they're free to go if they behave. If they behave themselves, you you scamps. Yep. Meanwhile, the pool hall ex-con, who all he's done is hung out at a pool hall. He's just running uh, his own business, man. Yeah. <laughs> small business owner. Just small business owner. Jail. Runs a high stakes poker game. That's his biggest crime. Yep. He has some muscle. Big deal. A lot of people right. have muscle. Fucking athletes have muscle. Here, but Act- here's the actors thing. Actors have muscle. Yeah. Even if he's doing bad stuff. He's innocent of the crime. Yeah, he's innocent <laughs> of this crime. We know he's innocent of this crime. Yeah, Mulder and Scully know. They and know. They, do, they don't they, do they, anything. Again, it's going to be them going to Sk- Skinner being like, so the magicians beat us. Uh, and they're like, well, you got the bank robber. Like, yeah, he didn't actually do it. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Ad- 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 Mulder, you know this person is, is innocent. Oh, yeah, he didn't do it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. I'm going to. Starts pulling out the I, wild turkey. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to, I guess, make some phone calls. Yeah, uh, right. I guess I need to call the State Department. Yeah. Or whatever. <laughs> Try to get this innocent man. <laughs> the out Justice of jail? Department, rather. Yeah. yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. It's a uh, real. <laughs> Real shit show at the end. Yeah, it really, really, is. really that... weird early to early uh, late nineties early aughts moralizing. Right, the, the it's dirty a criminal belongs drugs. in jail. Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, these They're... guys are fucking crooks too. Yeah, this is really like America is a maniac. Yeah, uh, it's just like Jesus fucking. What Christ. are we doing? Yeah, incredible. Uh, Oh my and they god. Even, and again, they they get scene. they get the final piece of the puzzle from Alvarez as he's being led away. He's shouting at them, "I've been framed. I've been framed by the magician." And they're like, "You mean the dead magician?" And he's like, "No. The fucking the Dane Cook guy." Right. That he guy. helps them. He yeah, helps them. He gives them information. Right. Also when Mulder's like, "I don't have any evidence." He has the card that they kept with the bag in it. Right, but he doesn't have any but it's just circumstantial. He he can't he cannot possibly prove that that's what they were going to do with but it. But that's got to be enough to hold them slightly longer. I don't or know. Or you know what? Even better, investigate them further. Right. <laughs> like he knows that. So they say like, all right, you're free to go because the magic is over. He says that knowing that they are not done, that they are about to commit another felony. Also, and so he could. He could let them try mm-hmm, that's like, true. and catch them. He could. That's certainly enough to investigate, like to go to their house, look at their what they have on their computers, mm-hmm. look at if they have anything planned well, out. They don't even any, need to l- like correspondence, they, you know, like, I don't they, know. They don't even need to do that to go to Ricky Jay's house because we're sort of forgetting that Ricky Jay has committed a federal crime. He's fraud for the past yeah, month. He's, he's been living right. as his brother. 
assumed right. his brother's identities, took over his job at the bank. That's fraud. Yep. A, a bank robbery they also committed. Yeah. They committed a bank robbery. So, the, yeah, proven well, he does, fraud. He, he doesn't know the, that they did the bank robbery. They can't prove the bank robbery. No, no, but it's proven fraud. Proven fraud. Uh, like yeah. you said, that's enough to hold him. Uh, they don't even think to arrest him for that. Uh, and that's enough to find evidence of this larger thing that they know they're doing. They literally like just if, give up doing every, on the case. I'm just thinking about it. Like I'm pretty sure because they make a deal out of like, oh, he's been logging into his brother's computer. He's been signing documents as his brother. I'm pretty sure every time he signed his brother's name on a document is a separate instance of fraud. Probably. So, yeah, he's done a lot of crimes. <laughs> yeah. They're so enamored with solving the yeah. magic heist yeah. that they forget that they're law enforcement agents. Yeah, again, they you forget, forget yourself that... when magic is happening. <laughs> exactly. They're so st- struck by like, yeah. I figured out, I I figured out your Ocean's Eleven heist, and then they just like walk into the sunset, forgetting to do any arrests. Yeah, like the magicians and leaving an innocent man in jail. <laughs> The, the magicians essentially ruffle Mulder's hair and like, ah, good job, champ. Yeah. And then walk out. Absolutely Having, having condemned an innocent man. Yeah, to because, life in prison. Because they don't like him. Yep. Yep, Mulder <laughs> fucks up his pool game. Nobody made you lose $20,000 to this guy in a card game. Right. He, in fact, he purpose. We learn. He did it on he, purpose. He did it on purpose. So he, you can't even argue that he's trying to get out of a debt Mm -hmm. he created the debt on purpose he created the debt and therefore could probably easily get out of the debt yeah if you remember dane cook just hated the guy from prison yeah we don't even know why we don't even know why he could be racist he could just be racist and have hated the fact that he had to have alvarez as his cellmate we have no idea yeah so he just uh ruined a man's life yeah that's all he did. That's wow. Wow. Mm-hmm. Should we name the enabler? I, Probably. I, all I'm going to do is just keep repeating this yeah. uh, because I am stunned by it. It's incredible, Dave. It's incredible. It's incredible. Uh, magic is the enabler. Magic that, is the, like they enable themselves. Yes, it's, they do. It's a perfect storm of being delighted by magic. <laughs> it really is. Uh, it is, it's the, just the magic, the, the of concept magic. of magic is, yeah. is the, uh, enabler in this episode. Right. Oh my God. Um, all right. Well, I guess final, Fucking, final section. What do we call this? Crazy, Crazy like, like, a, like fox. a fox. That's right. <laughs> like, I get it. This was a shocking episode. Man, I'm realizing as we're doing, we, we really need to do a magic podcast, Dave. Yeah, we do. <laughs> We've been threatening it behind the scenes maybe when for a we while. run out of maybe when we run out of molders we'll do yeah, a magic we gotta do our podcast. magic show yeah yeah um folks we've reached the part of the episode where we assign a numerical rating from one to ten to grade molders behavior one being you know professional restrained collected adult uh right. not alarming uh yes. and ten being just the opposite of all of those things that i just said um i think this is a 10 day yeah this is a all right participating in someone's <laughs> framing of the mm-hmm. ro- robbery mm-hmm. they are abetting mm-hmm. they are abetting criminals in they're this. dooming Aiding a guy in jail for a yep. crime they know he didn't commit yep. because they don't like him that's one of that's the highest tens it much like the previous episode this is a S- scully 10 too yes this is out she of his fucking mind completely complicit as well I Again, can't believe it. This dude's only transgression is that these people don't like him. Yep. Cuz he's cuz he's a little scary, I guess. Like yep. that's it. He's got tattoos. Cuz he's got tattoos and he's intimidating. Yep. yep. And so he is going to jail for life. He most Thanks likely. Thanks to Mulder and Scully. Most likely. Thanks three yeah. strikes. Yeah, hopefully he could get out of it, but you know, Mulder and Scully are apparently aren't going to do him any fucking favors so nope. jesus christ i mean i hope they do but we, the episode gives us no reason to believe that no 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 reason unreal perfect 10 mm-hmm. incredible yeah incredible oh 
It's like they, they forgot to make the bad guy a bad guy. Yeah, that is... Uh, <laughs> He's just a hard shit. ass that they personally dislike. Right. They, I don't think that's there's ever crime. a point. That's I don't think only he even crime. says anything. No. That's like, yeah. They He's come to him. Like, yeah. He's, He's just trying to like, run his business and they keep right. walking in and dropping shit on his lap. Yeah, they really are. This dude is visited by multiple magicians. Mm -hmm. That alone is upsetting. Yeah. And then Mulder and Scully and then the cops. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking drag him and to jail. And then he gets arrested. Holy shit. Hasn't done anything. Not a thing. Maybe he's oh. got security cameras in his bar and they'll be able to look at his cameras and see oh, that he, he was sure there all, so. all day and night. All we can do is hope for justice. Yeah. For this man. What an odd feeling to have at the end of an X-Files episode. I know. Is to like crave justice. Right. Like I feel like I just watched like an infuriating true crime documentary where somebody just got fucked over. Right. Right. This that we've talked about before is Mulder would be the subject of many true crime oh, documentaries. He'd have his own playlist on Netflix. Yeah, he would. He, he really would, be, would. He would be notorious. Yeah. He would be a notorious figure in law enforcement. At this point, he'd be fucking famous. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of the premise of this entire show, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's why but we did this, this show. Yeah, this was... Whew. <laughs> uh, what a solid, what an incredible episode. It is. Should we, uh, should we make this one free, Tom? I think so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> We've Let's made the decision Let's right now. Let's do it. Now. Let's turn this into our David Copperfield primetime special. Yes, let's do that. Uh, see, which means... You see, you see, Dave, the first taste is free. Exactly. Then you gotta buy tickets to the live show. Exactly. You gotta. Mm -hmm. You gotta. Holy shit. Um... So I guess I'll tell people that you can find other episodes on our Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. If you go on there, you find all of the episodes of Fox Mulder is a maniac, uh, as well as Tom and Jeff watch Batman, mm. uh, spiel boys, mm. Star Trek, the next Futurama. Those are all things we do and you can have access to them for $5 a month. That's it. Just That's five it. teeny tiny little well, dollars. And listen, we still have so you can go back and listen to all the others, but we got we got fucking X cops coming. Yeah. We got first person shooter coming. Mm -hmm. We got we got Hollywood A D coming. We got some uh, we got some real real bangers coming. <laughs> yeah, we got some <laughs> real fucking mind fuck episodes. So yeah. uh very exciting stuff on the horizon. Uh, uh that's it. Yeah, I mean, just our backlog alone. I don't know how many we've done. Four hundred of these. I don't know, man. How many? Uh, there's like I don't know. There's like twenty a season. It's impossible we, to know, Dave. It's impossible. Yeah. To know. It's an incalculable amount. We will never it know is. how many episodes we've done. No, there's no way to know. It's impossible to tell. Um, yeah. We also have a store. Head over to gameplayunemployed.com where you can find a link to our Teespring store, uh, where you can find all kinds of cool original artwork and designs, and get that on T-shirts and mugs and stickers and posters. All kinds of stuff. So check that out. Right. And if you see David Blaine, do your part. Call the police immediately. Yes. Do not hesitate. Artwork for Fox Mulder is a Maniac is produced by Starlene Hodge. Follow her on Twitter at Starlene X. That's Starlene with an X. Or check out her delightful webcomic at rubywhipple.com.